My name is Alex Myung, and I am 29 years old, and I was born in Daegu, South Korea. I was four months old when I was adopted, and I grew up in Albany, New York. You know, white mother, father, and they have a biological daughter who is my older sister. They did the best that they could to teach me about Korean culture, um, and I went to Korean culture camp, so to me, at that age, that felt very, you know, perfectly compartmentalized in the sense that, like, I didn't really have to worry about it. Like, once a year, I got to, like, hang out with adoptees, and then the rest of the year, I kind of was, you know, just the same as everyone else, even though in reality, I really wasn't. Um, and I think it wasn't until I was older and really started meeting other adult adoptees where I kind of took more time to really think about what adoption meant to me as an adult. More of what I struggled with growing up, at least, you know, the, my main problem was more uh, kind of coming to terms with my identity as a gay male. I came out when I was in 10th grade. My dad was driving me back from a Taekwondo class, actually, and I was being like super angsty about it for some reason. I had just been like that whole week, I had been so moody. I just started to cry for no reason, really. And my dad was like, uh, okay, like, <laughs> what's wrong? What do I do? And I was like, I'll tell you when we get home. And when we got home, I kind of just like blurted it out. and. At the time, my parents were very much like, okay, you know, we're okay with this, we think, but like, let's not air the dirty laundry. Like, let's not talk, a, you know, like, let's not let other people know because my parents are a little bit older um, for my age. And so for them, you know, being gay was the AIDS epidemic from the 80s. So uh, they were more concerned for my health and I think through time, uh, you know, you know, now my mom's like waving like the P flag and <laughs> you know, doing everything. You know, I, I, they're very supportive. Yeah. In two thousand seven or two thousand eight, I went to Korea um, through this like internship program. Uh, from my that my agency sponsored. The very first few days of our stay in Korea, we were in Seoul and we went to the adoption agency, like the, their sister office is there, and we kind of got to like kind of like pull out our files and I actually was sort of reluctant to. I just assumed, you know, they were dead or something. That was sort of my way, I think, to cope with it was just like, oh, well, they're not alive because why would they be? Even though I knew that there were so many other things that could have been the situation. Um, and so I was really reluctant to, but the girl that I was traveling with, she was like, oh, you should do it, you should do it. And we opened up the file and my mother gave birth to me <clears throat> um, when she was 23. And now she's re remarried, or I, I, she, wasn't remar she wasn't married before, but she has since married to someone else. And I have a half brother who at the time was 16. Um, so he's you know only like a few years younger than I am really, yeah. I'm really interested in meeting my half-brother. I think that's what is really making me, you know, what's really compelling me to do that search. Um, what is maybe keeping me away from it is the fact that because she married someone else, you know, if he doesn't know that she had me when she was 23 years old, um, and then even if he's cool with that, meeting them, like, hey, I'm gay, like, would that be a problem or not? I need to decide if I'm willing to put the emotional effort into it and then possibly get, like, nothing back out of it, yeah. I certainly have a love-hate relationship with being adopted, but I think it's a little bit, it's a little different in the sense that um, I've been given many more opportunities to live openly as a gay male because I was adopted um, and I live here, you know, in New York. Um, and had I grown up in Korea, I don't know if that would have been the same. 
but I certainly experienced that sense of loss, you know, like loss of language, loss of culture. Um, I certainly have those feelings every now and then. I think the important thing that I want to take away from that and to other adoptees that might share my positive experience and to their families is that, you know, like those adoptees out there that are struggling, um, their fight is not an assault on, you know, my childhood or our, it's not a personal attack on our families. And to think that all adoptees have grown up with the same exact resources, I think is being pretty willfully blind. If anything, I think we as adoptees who might feel like we're in a better emotional position, I think we should be doing everything we can to help support them. Um, because at the end of the day, they're really the only people that are ever going to fully understand, you know, the things that we deal with and that we go through as adoptees. My name is Alex Myung, and this is my Korean American story. Thank you.